welcome back to the Botanist Garden Club. I'm Wendy. And I'm Elka. And you are the focus of our episode you, today. It's you this time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've been in business for a very long time, almost 20 years mm -hmm. now, isn't it? Yep. And I've been with Botanist for, I think, 14 of those, mm -hmm. almost. Yep. And every year, every season, we get questions from customers. Emails, phone calls. The emails are great because we can take our time answering them. I, I really like those. But what we've noticed over the years is that there are some questions that keep getting asked over and over and over again. So we thought we would address those questions today for everybody. So everybody has the answers to them rather than just the people that are, you know, sending in those questions. Exactly. So it's, it seems like that if a lot of people have these questions, that mm -hmm. means there's even more of them That's right. who didn't ask them, mm -hmm. but, but they still struggle with it, yeah, exactly. but they need the answers for it. I, so. I think it's kind of cool too, because over the years, of course we came to the business with a big knowledge base, but over the years we have learned things, we have uh, taught a lot of things, but I think that's kind of the essence of what we do here. Yes, we're a business, a mail order plant business, but we have recently noticed that there is a real need out there, and hence the Garden Club, mm -hmm. for answers to questions. Not everybody has all those answers. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's very interesting because we are living in our little world where we live, like we live here on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Some people uh, live in very, very cold climates where we can't even imagine that they garden. Oh, fantastic uh, and, gardens. And they do, <laughs> do, 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 like they send us pictures and they do an amazing job. Yeah. So uh, that's their way of thinking, you know, when they start and what's, what's going on and how yeah. they plan. And so we learn a lot from because we ship all over Canada, yes. we ship in mm -hmm. every climate zone, literally in every climate zone, from zero, zone zero, can you imagine, there's <laughs> people up there who, who That's are, a dedicated uh, yeah, garden. Uh, absolutely, I mean, their gardens are I'm stunning. totally in awe. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And down to uh, zone nine, yes. zone nine, yes. Yeah, yeah now uh, Victoria is classified as a zone nine, which mm -hmm. is crazy. Yeah. Or as high as a zone nine. So yes, obviously different kinds of uh, doing things, and we learn as we go, and we would like to pass it on. Exactly, we probably, this is the first time we've done a question and answer, uh, episode, but I'm mm -hmm. sure we'll do it again. Yeah. So today what we've done is compiled a few questions that we've just gotten over and over again over the years and we're going to share our answers with you as a whole. Get the glasses mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I need those glasses. Question one. Um, a lady uh, called or mailed and she said, can I move lilies or any plant during the growing season? Uh, that's a good well, question. it's a very good question. Bottom line is, it's not the best uh, situation to, to move anything while it is growing or blooming or anything because it's in full, it needs all the energy while it is blooming, while yes. it is going. So you will see a lot of uh, um, arborists, for example, people who cut hedges, the best time to cut or move or do anything with plants like that is very early in the season mm -hmm. because that's when they are just about getting out of the dormant stage or after the blooming season when it's when doesn't need the energy for that. So yes, it's either definitely. before or after. But of course there's always other moments. True. People have said, oh, you know what, they were having the house renovated and they're going to bulldoze the area, <laughs> so can I move them? And I think, well, you have no choice. Exactly. <laughs> when it's something like that and you have no choice to move, then the best uh, thing you can do for those beautiful plants is to give them a very wide berth and lift them because death by something else is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. So give them a very wide berth. Try not to disturb the roots as much as possible. And something that I learned over the years, which is a very good <clears throat> trick to know about any kind of hosta or fleshy leaf plant or perennial, if you have to move it when it's not a really good time, then you can go outside and tie a string around or raffia or anything around the leaves to hold them upright. Do that very wide digging and make sure when you replant them that you put them in a, a super well watered hole with lots of water afterwards and keep them well watered mm -hmm. until they are standing on their own. That string helps those leaves sort of get through that shock period where they want to droop exactly. and just fall exactly. down. Exactly. It lets, allows the water to keep going up into the stem. Mm -hmm. So our answer to that question is, it's preferable not to move them, but if you have to, then take all the precautions you can so that they will have a good spot to live in afterwards you know, type those stems and make sure they're super, super well watered exactly. during that and, time. And make sure it, uh, stuff like that is best done early in the morning oh, because the plant point. is yeah. really kind of goes into like, you know, in a sleep mode in, at night too. So there's not like this whole first uh, full of energy kind of stage. So when you do it right in the morning when it's still a little bit cooler and then you pl uh, replant it in a pot or something where you, however you want to move it and then make sure it doesn't sit in the sunshine or anywhere during the day. Like keep it cool, as cool as you can uh, and that's the time uh, to move it. That's great. Okay, those are really good hints. I'm, I hope that helps. 
The next question we have is, how do I protect my containers over the winter? Oh, okay, this big one. Yeah, it's a big question. We need a show for that one, a whole <laughs> show just. I mean, you might just do that. It's yeah. actually a good idea. We've done a little mm -hmm. bit in the past on it. And the reason that it is such a huge question is because we have such a huge country. Mm -hmm. And I can't even tell you, there's just, we can't even name how many different processes you can use to protect your containers. That's why it's such a big question. Mm -hmm. But what we can say is this. The containers that you will plant your bulbs or tubers and, and corms and things in are of a size that allows for not as much protection for the things that are planted as the earth does. Yep. When you plant a bulb or a bare root outside in the earth, it has thousands of tons to keep it protected over the winter and during even the growing season. It allows it to, uh, protection from the sun. So when you are taking a container and putting it away for the winter, you have to put it in an area that it will be frost free because the bulbs that are inside have no protection from that thousands of tons of earth. They have a smaller amount of protection. If you think about it, all sides of a container are exposed. Sides, top, and even the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So put them in a shed, put them in a garage, put them close to the house, and if it's not frost free, wrap it. Exactly. Lift it off the ground. You can even put uh, pieces of wood underneath it to protect it from that very cold concrete wrap it, put boughs on the top, put a blanket over it, put a box of shredded newspaper over it. Have mm -hmm. I missed anything in that? Well, um, I would I would basically start at the bottom because I mean a lot of problems is that especially on the west coast we have a lot of rain mm -hmm. uh, um, but the drainage is the mo most important part so lift it up a little bit and put it on a piece of, of wood or a piece of even foam or anything, foam, anything yes. that just lifts it up so the so it doesn't pluck the hole and of course we have a lot of people say well i don't have a garage i don't i live in a on a like a in an apartment i have uh, a balcony uh, and i still want to protect uh, my plants so for those people as close as you can to the wall to the house wall because there's always it's always a little bit warmer than on the other end that's so true uh, and of course wrapping and there's bubble wrap that you can use cardboard you can use cardboard boxes even though they get wet and you know they, they probably fall apart soon <laughs> but um, you know it's it's the cardboard you can stuff it with newspaper and then you wrap it in a plastic this whole thing and uh, for so to protect it from the wetness yes. and then wrap it a little bit in a in a, uh, you know, like with a string around, so it doesn't really fall apart. Oh, that's a great but idea. really, anything that just makes this thing a little bit warmer. It's mm -hmm. just like, and like you said, a blanket or something. Right. And uh, uh, if it's something you look at it, you don't want to look at a ratty cardboard box when it's just it's right outside the patio door. Um, I would just decorate it up with raffia or with the jute. Uh, the jute yeah, oh, the, and the uh, burlap. The you burlap. Can wrap it in burlap. Burlap. Perfect. I mean, you know, just do the whole plastic uh, warm thing first, and then decorate it outside with. Some burlap, a nice ribbon, and some greenery yeah. in it. And the provided pocket. some air. If you're wrapping, if you're putting plastic around the sides, yeah. remember you don't want to be like a plastic bag and hold too much moisture in. Yeah. So just keep that that a little more open. Remember that part of it. And think about this too. The bulbs are a little more in need of protection than roots would be because the bulbs are very fleshy. And if they get wet and that water freezes, it's not necessarily, it's not going to be good for them. The water freezes and then they turn to mush. So this is where the protection comes in. And there are a thousand more ways you can do it, mm -hmm. but we hope this gives you a good start to know how to sort of look after them. And this, you can get creative in many different ways and just use what you have and the areas you have around your house and uh, use that as your guide. Exactly. Okay, what's next? Okay, next question. Glasses on. <laughs> Uh, how do I store tubers over winter? Well, another good one. Tubers, maybe, maybe let's think about dahlias. Let's use that as our example. Basically, I would say, let's just say tubers plus everything you have to over winter. And we, we had, I think we had a show, um, there is summer uh, blooming bulbs and they come from a warmer climate that don't survive outside. We have the tulips and daffodil and crocus, that's the stuff we leave in there and it comes but back every year, right. but the, the summer plant, bulbs, yeah, yeah, those are the ones you have to lift out and store. And it actually already starts, the storing process starts by lifting it out, that you have to take them out and let them dry a little bit. And not in the bright sun and in the hot sun where it really dries them out, but give them some air so right. the wet soil around can actually dry up because that's the stuff that sticks on it and when you, know, when you store them away, it cause a problem. It cause problems. Yeah. Right. So that's the first one is lifting them, shake the soil off, let them dry up a little bit for a few days mm -hmm. in the shade and then find a box. Good. And the box can be full of torn newspaper, it can be full of 
say, uh, peat sawdust, moss. peat moss, mm -hmm. things like that. An, an e a medium that is sort of light and airy and will allow a bit of air circulation inside. And that's the, the trick with the air circulation. Yes. You choose a box mm -hmm. like a cardboard or a wooden box or something, not plastic, because it, it just kind of, you know, it, it, it starts molding. Right? Exactly. And when you store them, you want to make sure before they go into those uh, containers that they are going to be, they're good, viable bulbs. So you, when you've dug them up, then you want to go through them and cut anything off that's funky or um, weird looking or soft. And what you can do is use simple cinnamon from your kitchen. Oh, to, love that. Uh, I know, isn't that a great Everybody's tip? Everybody's cinnamon at home. Yeah, mm -hmm. take the cinnamon and just dab that on any cut you've had to make. And it's an antifungal property. So it stops them from bleeding. It stops any kind of uh, bad germs getting inside of that little tuberous root. Mm -hmm. And really important, they have to be stored in an area that is cold but frost free. Mm -hmm. The frost will definitely damage these tender little Exactly. Uh, tubers. And, and I think then don't forget to go back there. Probably once mm -hmm. a month or so I would go back and check just to see because if it's like that, you know, the typical the one rotten apple in the basket yes. who just affects everything. So if you have a little piece that just kind of keeps you know, it's just a bit harder. Yeah, and yeah. maybe it was even a little soft when you stored it, and then it just didn't make it, and it starts dying. And, it, and now you have a little mold know. in there, and it just keeps affecting all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you cut it off and use the cinnamon on it, and then you, you're fine. Just keep right. them clean and. Right. And happy. once a month. You can't just expect them to go in there in October and come back in March and not yeah. have any. And most likely you're fine. Every time you look, yes. it's all good. But, you know, don't let it happen and then it's too late. That's right. And you can adjust what you see in there too. If you say, okay, they're looking a little bit to me a bit moist, well take that paper out yep. and put a little less paper in next time because maybe it needs a little more air circulation. Mm -hmm. And if it's looking a little dry, well then take it out and put it back in with uh, less. So less or more. If you're finding they're too moist, take some of that paper out, let them breathe. If they're looking a little dry, then maybe put a little more protection around to keep the moisture in those tubers. Mm -hmm. So exactly. I hope that helps. That's a really good question good stuff, we've had good many, stuff, many, many times. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Next one is yours. Ah, uh, yes. How, now, this is a question I get a lot. People will call and say, oh my gosh, there's been a, you know, an accident in the family or a tragedy, and I just did not get my fall planting bulbs in the ground mm -hmm. and say it's January or late December or whenever. And they're concerned, what should I do? Should I store them? Should I plant them? And our, ans our answer is to you, plant them. Mm -hmm. Now I know there's some places in Canada that you couldn't plant them, like my sister lives in Prince George. She couldn't plant because it would be frozen solid there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But mm -hmm. what she can do is plant them in containers. The rule of thumb is, if you haven't had them planted in the fall when they're supposed to go in, plant them, plant them somewhere, anywhere, when you find them and when you have the chance. Because to try and store them until the next fall, it, it's almost impossible to do with them. Yeah, they, they will struggle. I mean, yeah. you, let, you leave them Drop bare, bare like there's no, mm -hmm. there's no protection, there's just nothing, nothing there. So it's, the chances are pretty high, actually, to, to put them into the ground, in ground even if it's a, a pot. A container, exactly. A container. And you don't need to water. Think about what's going on outside. Yeah. They're planted six inches under the ground outside and they're under the cover of the, all that soil and they might get a little snow, they might get a little rain, but it's not going to affect them. They're just down there setting roots. Yeah. You water them you once at the time of planting, yes. you and water then them just let them go. And, which is a very good uh, trick for, for any planting because you know they have, when you plant something, then uh, there's a lot of air around the roots mm -hmm. or the bulb itself. And so when you push it on and then the first watering really just tightens it really nice no, into the soil. And, and often people lose plants by cold and it's not just because it's so cold, it's also because they don't have enough water. And then that's that, that balancing act mm -hmm. be between no drainage and it's too wet uh, and and actually they need water because when you when you think if a, pl a plant you have a really big plant you move it in the garage and it's bone dry uh, it creates these air pockets and then the cold goes directly to the roots mm -hmm. and that's when they die be because it was too dry not because it was too, too cold well that is a good point that applies to almost every question we've asked today we just answer, answer them all at once. exactly <laughs> so remember that and that when you are it's better to plant that's our answer and it's it's an easy one for us because we know that storage in in many cases and well in all the cases that I've ever seen, yeah. just does not work. Plant, 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 containers or outdoors if you're able to. Okay. Question Next answered. <laughs> Glasses on. What's oh, the next glass one? On. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. What do I do if there's a sudden change? No, that's the, that's the one we just answered. Oh, no, it isn't. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. But Wendy. She knows her business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it sounds in the beginning, it sounds kind of the same Similar, thing, yes. but it changes at the end. Oh, okay, again. <laughs> what do I do if there's a sudden change in temperature after I receive my order mm -hmm. and it's just mm -hmm. too cold to plant? So that is the situation when Botanus always sends the plants at the time of planting. We always say to you, no matter when you order, we will send it to you at the time of planting. Yeah. So we look at the calendar, it's now time, uh, especially now in the spring, that's, yes, a, that's a good indication. Right now. now we think, okay, you know, let's, it's, it's good now, they're all fine, they have nice, nice weather, we ship it. And then there's this fluke thing coming, not, not, not that you have like three months of cold coming, but it's like a whole weekend, maybe a week of cold and you go like, what, like now we have a very yeah, hot spring. I what am I going to do? So, so now you, you think like, okay, what am I going to do? I have the order. It mm. came yesterday. I want to plan, but it actually they're calling for some really cold snap for the next week. What do I do? Well, there's two things. I want to start that answer for you. There's a couple of things you have to keep in mind that if you're going to plant within the next couple of days, then you can do that. We, mm -hmm. we always recommend right away, uh, optimal. But if you've got a couple of days, you think, oh, on Wednesday, it's going to be perfect. Next yeah, day is that's Monday. Fine. Okay. That's fine. Cool. Then open the keep box cool. up cold and dark, exactly, then they'll be fine. But open it up and let all the packages breathe. That's the perfect solution to that. But if it's going to be any longer than that, what do we say? Plant, Plant. them in <laughs> containers. Get them started. There's nothing wrong with planting a bare root, a bulb, or anything in a container. Put good drainage in there, some nice potting soil. Mm -hmm. To me, I think that's almost a better way to get a bare root started because what you're doing is getting it growing already. Yep. And then you put it in a, a place that is nice and warm and sunny. Now I'm suggesting not inside. We all know how cold it can be outside, but find a nice sunny location that's protected against the house in yep. the sun and you can control how much water it gets. If it's so cold and it's, that's not going to work, then you find another spot that is more protected. Inside is not optimal, but just for a day or so, it's going to be exactly, fine. Exactly, exactly. Did I miss anything? No, actually, actually, but I, it was a very good idea to mention that the pot is a good starter because, mm -hmm. the, especially those black, uh, black, black uh, gallon pots, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they also, a black pot really uh, draws it's the sun uh, to, to the pot so that they have a nice little warm pot yeah. for the mm -hmm. uh, stuff it's to start. And especially pot. when it's a very small root, you know, you, you almost lose it in the soil. So after you did that, if you have everything in the pots and you say, okay, you now it's, it's good, you can either say, now I'm going to leave it a little bit in the pot so it gets a nice root yeah, system five, in it. Yeah, six inches even of growth yeah, on just top. A, that it, yeah. it would be nice actually to leave it there because because now you, you get them started. And what happens with any root or, or bulb or anything, they start with very, very thin, almost hair-like roots. Mm -hmm. And if they start, uh, you know, like building these little roots and two days later you rip them out, uh, out again, you maybe damage them. So it, it would be better to leave them in there for a week or, week so or, two, or two or longer or so. even. Yeah. Uh, and then when you replant them, make a nice hole in your garden. And I just kind of lift the whole pot without shaking yeah. anything mm -hmm. and just take the whole wall and put it in the soil without a lot of shaking and, and, That's and right. ripping Very on the gently. roots. Very That's gently. a really good point. I know that some people actually take those containers and just sink them in the soil. That's another thought. Yes, yeah, well. but then you obviously have no way to go. If, right. if it's a bigger plant that you want to get big, then yeah, get it just out. don't. But don't gently, go. gently, gently. Just think of these very hairline roots that, yeah. uh, that are easy to be, gentle to be broken them. off again. Yeah. Good, that's great. Good okay. stuff. Now, okay. one of the other done. questions that we hear a lot, oh, oh we've got one more, oh. <laughs> is what does top size oh, and number one mean? That's right, without the glasses, we are hopeless. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, what does top size and number one mean mm -hmm. when you see them in our catalog? And that's a question we get a lot, and I want to tell you, they're very similar answers, so we're going to treat them as one answer, and that is when we go to our growers, we say, okay, what are we going to get this year? It's very dif difficult for them to estimate, and a lot of times what they'll just, what the rule of thumb is, it's either top size or number one. So it's the very best that they have to offer is what we are getting. And some years it'll be huge. Yeah, the the, be we call smaller. it the, the best bang for your buck mm -hmm. is the top size. There's always smaller stuff that it's uh, it's either uh, we call it landscape size and that means by bulbs for example um, a lot of landscapers need a lot of bulb let's just say they put a 50 or 100 tulips in a flower bed uh, while we as an end consumer we use maybe 10 or 5 only in a grouping so those 50 or 100 it's all about the overall effect so you use smaller bulbs because you're looking at the whole picture the landscape if you want to look at the single flower you use the bigger size so top size is the best bang for your buck but then there is the mammoth size or something really big where you would pay really extra money for the super size but it's not necessarily 
Which mm -hmm. you don't have to have it for yeah, a fabulous show. Yeah, it's. Sure. I mean, it, it's really it's like a custom order of kind of, mm -hmm. of, kind of size. Really. So when we say number one or top size, it means that our grower has guaranteed us we are going to get the very best out of his fields. That's mm -hmm. what's going to be coming to us. And I think that's uh, that's a good thing to note. So we can't tell you the exact size, but know that it's the best that our grower has to offer, and that's what we are getting. Exactly. And I think especially when it comes to fall bulbs like tulips, I, I really like to go there uh, with the landscape size, because sometimes you really have a, an area where you say, you know what, I, I don't want to spend this the big money for the single flowers, because I want to... I want to have a show effect mm -hmm. and then and we actually sell them as landscape size. Yeah, that's our bulk. That's, that's our the bulk, bulk as, uh, section and that it really is, um, you know, you, you have to look at the sizes when you compare prices mm -hmm. because there is places where you get and you go like, well, it's about half the price. What are they doing with here, with us here? But is it the same size? Because usually the, be the bigger size also gives you bigger flowers or bigger plants and faster when it comes mm -hmm. to roots for example um, it's maybe just a year behind because then you know we, we, roots are growing well, you have that saying of oh yes my grandmother used to say first year sleep second year creep third year leap and that is true for perennials they mm -hmm. are they start small but they go gangbusters and they get bigger and bigger they're in your yard for 50 odd years some of them yeah so you start with a, a little and you get a lot in the end so top size is best bang for your buck exactly that's what we've got for you <laughs> So that's, that's the last question we had today, and we're definitely going to do this again. Yeah. And as you know, we like to give away a little something every time we do an episode. And today the question is, what simple household item can you use to prevent kind of fungal infections and things like that on your plants? What simple item is that? Mm -hmm. and, and I think you really have to go back then and check that because we gave you a lot of tips <laughs> and that was did. buried somewhere. <laughs> and tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow what we'll do is we'll draw three names from the answers uh, that have been sent to Garden Club at Botanist.com and three people will receive $10 gift certificates to spend. Ooh. I know I like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know, we I love it when someone calls and places an order and they go, and I'm using my gift card. Yeah, people love Good it. Good for you. Well, yeah, yeah why we love it, it too. Love it. Exactly. <laughs> so I think that's all for today, and I think this has really been good for us. And please, we encourage you to send your questions to us. Email them to gardenclubatbotanist.com, and we will answer them for you. And we'll hopefully teach you something. And we always learn something as well because we learn what people across Canada want to know. Exactly. And this and has do. been fun. Thank you so much, Alka. Yes. Thank you, Wendy. We'll see you again next week. Have see a great you. week. Bye-bye.